All right, uh, Benford's Law, everybody. Uh, this is actually a real thing. You can Google search it if you don't believe me. Uh, and the numbers here, I believe, are the correct ones. But anyhow, it it's a, a relatively uh, simple idea, but it, it just takes a lot more effort on our part to get the data to a point where we can actually run the chi-square analyses on it. So that's the hard part about uh, these questions is they're just kind of labor intensive. So when you come across a, a Bedford's uh, Law question, just know that you're going to have to do some work. First things first, if you click on Benford's Law, it'll bring up uh, this table and it'll tell you that, you know, if you're looking at a, a random set of numbers, and these numbers could be anything, they could be uh, the, the totals of checks, uh, they could be uh, electricity bills, they could be uh, 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 voter ID numbers, uh, things like that, that the first digit, right, the leading digit of that set of numbers 30% of the time it should be a 1, 17.6% of the time it should be a 2, and so on and so forth. Now if we open this in StatCrunch, this gives us the idea of, okay, this is the digit that we would see, this is how often we would see it. So that's kind of like an expected frequency, but this is an expected percent. Remember, when we're dealing with chi-squares, we need expected frequency. So we need to turn these percentages into actual numbers, right? If I had a sample of so many things, then I would need to take 30% of that sample. So we're going to have to do some math. The next thing is we take a look at uh, the checks. In this particular question, there were a bunch of checks written, and we're trying to see if uh, they actually follow Benford's Law or not. Here's the first hurdle. If you try and open that in StatCrunch, it closes the previous one, right? So what I suggest is if you want it all open at once, um, the easiest thing to do is to either then with the other one copy and paste or with this one copy and paste. Or if you open this, you can copy it with Control-C just open StatCrunch yourself, paste it into StatCrunch, okay? So these are my checks. Now you don't always have to uh, relabel things, I just like to relabel them so you know what's going on. Now if we go back to our question, and we open Benford's Law, then you can, again, Control C for copy, click up here, Control V, because in that way it, it pastes the uh, the titles as well. So now I have everything all in one place. Okay, to run chi square, you really need your observed and your expected. Remember, these need to be frequencies. So observed is just the number of times that you see something in each category. Now, if we went with these nine categories, um, the problem is our expected would be really small, right? Because we need to take 30.1% of our sample. We have a sample of 23. So these numbers here, and I'll do it in StatCrunch to illustrate what I mean. If you go to data compute expression, build an expression, I'm going to take the percentages and add that column. I'm going to multiply that by 23 because that's my sample size, but then I'm going to divide it by 100 um, because you'll notice that these things aren't listed in percentages, right? 30, if I want to take 30% of something, I have to multiply it by 0 0.301. So dividing by 100 just turns this into an actual percentage. If I hit OK and compute, it gives me a, a new column, and these are the, the expected uh, number of checks that we should see according to Benford's law from a sample of size 23. So out of 23, if you do 30% of that, we get almost nine checks, right? Then we get a little over four checks, a little less than three, right? Et cetera, et cetera. And there's a problem with these numbers because in order to run a chi-square analysis, all of your categories must have expected values of five or greater. And you'll notice that none of those except for the first digit, right, digit of one, has that. And that's a problem, which is why in this question, 
it says, right, because not all expected values are at least five, it's necessary to combine our categories. So use one category with a leading digit of one, which we have, and then the second category will be the leading digits of two through five, and then the last one will be six through nine. Okay, so we now have kind of these new categories. Again, you don't have to title these things. So we're going to have the category 1, 2 through 5, and 6 through 9. Well, category 1 is the 30.1%. 2 through 5 is those things added together. And then 6 through 9 are these things added together. You can do this in your calculator, do it by hand for crying out loud. I'm just going to quickly do it here, summary stats on these two columns, and all I need is the sum. So there you have it, 47.7 for this, so point. 477, right, because I want to write it as a percentage, and this one is 0.222. And then, of course, if you sum these all together, they would sum to 1, because they would have to. There's my 100%. Now, um, these are my percents, right, and I'm going to use those to calculate my new um, expecteds, and, and then I'll figure out my new observed. So again, I'm going to go into data, compute expression. I'm going to build a new one. I'm going to take my percents, right? So my percents column, and I'm just going to multiply that by 23 because that's my sample size. And I don't have to worry about the dividing by 100 thing because I've already written them as percents. Compute that, and it puts it over here. These are my expected um, expected frequencies for those three categories. I'm going to put that here for expected. Now I need to figure out my observed. Well, remember this is still category one. So how many of my checks started with a one? They've already ordered it for me, so I don't have to sort them. And I can see that I only have one check that started with a one. And then how many started with a two through five? Well, that's all of those, right? And that's 16 minus the 1, so there's 15 of those. And then how many started with 6 through 9? That's those, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And, of course, they should add up to 23, which they do. So I didn't uh, make any math mistakes. So these are my observed. These are my expected. Now, you might be asking, hey, isn't this a problem since I only have 1 in my observed? No, chi-square only uh, worries that the expected frequencies are all five or above. It does not care at all about the observed. The observed can be as small as they are. I mean, they could be zeros, and it's no big deal. It's just the expecteds. Now that I have my observed and expected, it's now just a matter of running a simple chi-square. And, you know, we're doing um, just one set of data that's categorized one way, so it's not a contingency table, it's a goodness of fit. My observed are the observed. My expected, right? We would use this if we expected uh, an equal, right? We had 33.3% in each of those three categories, but we don't. We have this other, right, expected frequencies. And remember, we have to use the numbers and not the percentages, right? Even though I said 33.3% in each category, I mean, that's the percentages. We would then have to do 33.3% of 23, figure out what that number was, and put it in each of those. This just does that math for us if we uh, use that option. Compute, here's our information. Let me bring this back up. Okay. The first part, the null alternative, well, remember, the null is always that um, the proportions match the hypothesized distribution. And according to when we um, did the data, 
right here. Our first category was 30%, right? Then 47.7, 22.2. And you can see that here's those numbers, 30%, 47.7, 22.2. Same thing here. And then the alternative isn't that they're all different. It's just that at least one of the proportions is not equal to the given claimed value. So that's the first part. We move on to the second part where it asks us for our test statistic right here. All right. Round to three decimals. So that would be two, four, nine. The six would bring the nine up, so it would be two, five. Finding the critical value. Right, if we want to find the critical value, that's based on our alpha. So where, oh, here it is. Use a 0.01 significance level and our degrees of freedom, right, 0.2. So now we can go back to stat calculators, chi-square, because that's the kind of distribution we're on. That's what we always use our calculators to find critical values. Put in our degrees of freedom of 2, our alpha level was 0.01. And it's a greater than, because with chi-square, we're always doing an upper tail test, right? Because it's always, uh, you reject when your chi-square values get too large. And here's our critical value, 9.2. We can see that's above ours. And there's our p-value, which is above the 0.01%. But that's a pretty small p-value, right? Which is the nice thing about using the p-value method, because even though in this particular case, we would fail to reject, right, because our p-value is bigger than our alpha level. We set a pretty high alpha level, right? Our alpha level is set at 1%. Um, you, if you report the p-value to the reader, they can make their own decision. They can go, you know what, um, that's a pretty small p-value. If I set my alpha to be 5%, then I would reject, and I would say that this guy had committed fraud. Right? So it just depends on, on your level of, you know, assuredness before you uh, go ahead and, uh, accuse this guy of fraud. But according to our test statistic being this, our critical value being this, right? So our test statistic is, is smaller than this, which means the p-value is bigger. I know that gets confusing. Draw a picture and label the picture to help you see that. But the bottom line is the easiest thing is the p-value is bigger than alpha, so we fail to reject. Fail to reject, and every time we fail to reject, there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim, blah, 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 blah. And because we could not reject our claim, and our claim was that everything matched what we thought it would match, then that means it appears that the checks are the result of fraud. Nope. It means they do not appear because they seem to match Benford's law. Okay, and that's how to tackle the Benford's Law questions. Uh, I know it feels like a lot of work, and it is. You know, it's a lot of uh, data manipulation to get the numbers where you want them to be. Once they're in the proper form, running the chi-square analysis was very simple. So the hardest part about the Benford's Law questions is just dealing with the data. Okay.